A very good evening to all of you. My name is Aman Yadav, a student of Civil Engineering Department of the Faculty of Engineering, here to present a seminar on the topic Continuous Reinforced Concrete Payment. So let's start with the first slide consist of the list of contents in which I am going to elaborate the introduction of the CRCP. What is CRCP? Then the second point of reference is why CRCP? Actually, why CRCP is so important to be constructed? Then I'm going to tell you some key features of the CRCP. Then the next slide is contain the CRCP component. Actually, there are two main components of the CRCP, which is concrete and the steel. So I'm going to elaborate it in this slide. Then the next slide is a typical design feature, typical design of CRCP in which I am going to tell you about the, some design features of the CRCP. Then next slide is uh, transverse crack spacing and width. Actually the CRCP is consist of the transverse crack which is hold by the aggregate interlocking and which help us in the low transfer mechanism so it is the most important phenomena of the crcp so i am going to elaborate it then the crcp distresses type in this slide i am going to tell you about the most common failures such as punch out spreading corrosion of the crcp then actually crcp is widely used in many countries of the world like usa Texas, Oregon. So here is a case study on the Oregon. Then we are on the conclusion of our seminar. So let's start with the brief introduction of the CRCP that is continuously reinforced concrete payment. Actually, as you know, transport is a vital infrastructure for rapid economic growth of the country. And nowadays about 60% of foresight and 80% of the passenger transport is made by road transport in India which demonstrate the need of development of a good road network. So what actually CRCP does, <coughs> sorry, so continuously reinforced concrete payment eliminates the need of transfer joint other than at the bridges and other structures and keep the cracks tight resulting in the continuous smooth riding surface that is virtually maintained free and the continuous reinforcement is a strategy for managing the transfer cracking that occurs in all new concrete payment so the next slide is why crcp is so important then in concrete payment the longitudinal reinforcing steel is continuous throughout the payment length it is a joint less concrete payment sufficiently reinforced to control the cracking without the aid of weakened transfer joint such as are used in the ordinary or conventional type of the concrete jointed payment Reinforcement reinforced bar in the concrete are left to form the continuous reinforcement holding the pavement together in all kind of the weather and preventing formation of the large cracks that would otherwise reduce to the service life of the pavement. CRCP has all the good features features of the pavement such as durability, high strength, non skid and the good vision at the night. So. So this is why the CRCP is so important to be constructed. Then the next slide is about the key features. There are some key features of the CRCP. Actually what CRCP does is to facilitate load transfer across cracks. Okay, according from with the help of the aggregate interlocking. And also with the help of the aggregate interlocking, it holds crack tightly and which result in provide the stiffness while resisting and movement. No transfer actually uh, already discussed no transfer joint is required in this and high tensile structural strength and durability. So let's start our next topic next point of reference is the component of the CRCP. So the first component of the CRCP is concrete. Concrete is an artificial stone like material used for the various structural purposes. It is made by the mixing cement, sand and the various aggregates such as gravel, gravel and shale with the water and align the mixture to harden by the hydrogen. Hydronation, sorry. Cement in the concrete acts as a primary binding to join the aggregate into the solid mass like jointed plain concrete pavement. CRCP is constructed using pozzolana concrete 
disposal on a cement concrete that is pcc expect that except that aggregates used must have coefficient of thermal expansion actually the aggregate which are we are going to use in concrete pavement must have the thermal expansion is of 6.0 into 10 to the power minus 6 per fahrenheit or less so the next component of the continuously reinforced concrete pavement is steel actually all we know uh, all we know the, the what uh, the steel is actually used as a reinforcement material in our pavements so the we are going to use the steel in two major types the first in longitudinal reinforcement and then in transfer reinforcement so let's talk about the longitudinal reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement steel used for crcp consists of grade 60 steel bars space at the 5.5 to 9 inches from center to center distance the recommended position of the longitudinal steel is 4 inches from the surface of the concrete to the top of the reinforcement bar expect the thickness except sorry except the thickness greater than 9 0.95 foot where slightly deeper cover is where slightly deeper cover is needed so that the transfer bar is not cut by the joints then the next po point is a transfer reinforcement it transfers steel is gradually grade 16 m in which we are going to use grade 60 demonstrated deformed steel bar at the space of 12 to 36 inches from center to center distance on the pavement width so let's talk about some design features of the crcp this is the its design life is uh, 30 year of the rigid pavement and its um, traffic density which is registered by the continuously reinforced concrete pavement is 5000 bicol per day on a four lane road and the concrete which we are going to use is m40 concrete and the grade of steel which we are going to use is a 415 fe415 the next point is maximum temperature difference between the top of the slab top and bottom of the slab is 21 degree the maximum it is actually the we allow the maximum temperature difference of 21 degree of the top temperature top mm -hmm. surface temperature and the bottom surface temperature which is the maximum value for the irc 58 okay then the next point is difference between the mean temperature of the slab at the time of construction and the coolest period is equal to 30 actually what it is this when we are constructing a continuously reinforced let's assume it is when we are constructing the continuously reinforced pavement the temperature of the climate is 35 degree and the coolest temperature on that area is 5 degree so the temperature difference is the 30 degree celsius so this is the maximum difference which we are allow which we are going to allow in the design of the concrete pavement so the next is the transverse crack actually the transfer crack actually we already discussed that uh, the continuously reinforced concrete pavement is consist of the transverse crack which is hold by the aggregate interlocking so the closely distributed transverse crack pattern in crcp reduces the stress reduces the stress in this lab and the combination of the tight cracks and steel reinforcement maintain a relatively high degree of the stiffness which allows for a resistance a structural resistant structural strength system and a high riding qualities so let's talk about the spacing and the width of the transfer crack which we are going to allow in the continuously reinforced concrete payment that is uh, the spacing the limit on crack spacing is depending on the spelling and the punch up punch function actually spelling and the punch function is a distress type or uh, the failures in the concrete payment which we are going to discuss uh, later so the maximum spacing between two consecutive cracks should be limited to the 2.4 meters okay the minimum desirable crack spacing is 1.1 meter to minimize the potential of punch outs so to minimize the potential of punch out we have to 
put uh, the minimum spacing of 1.1 meters and the maximum spacing between the cracks is 2.4 meters so let's talk about some bit parameters the selection of higher steel percentage or the small smaller dia reinforcement bar the crack width can be reduced as much as as much as possible the allowable breadth should be not exceeded as 1 mm per aa sth then let's the here uh, the view of our transfer crack in which the, uh, we are going in which the zone aggregate interlocking helps to hold the cracks and the the distance between the two cracks is a crack spacing and which results in the good low transfer mechanism so there are some distresses type in the concrete pavement so the first is a wide transfer crack lower actually what is the wide transfer crack lower reinforcement contents in crcp can cause rock spacing to develop greater than 10 ft that is 3 meters in some cases this large crack spacing can lead to a widening of transfer cracks and to an increase in tensile stresses in the reinforcement medium and high so here are the some list of the medium and a high transfer crack width which is ranging from 0.1 to 0. 24 inches that is 3 to 6 mm if the greater than 0.24 in 9 mm should immediately be received a full depth repairs now let's talk about the spelling what is spelling spelling along the transfer curves on crcp is a result of localized fracturing <coughs> it is a local localized fracturing of the concrete that initiate as a shear declimination parallel to the surface of the crcp at a shallow depth condition linked to the formation of crcp declimination includes low in interfacial stress between the aggregate and mortar and moisture loss from the hydrating con concrete that results in the different differential drying shrinkage near to the crcp surfaces <coughs> so the next slide is con consists of the punch out and corrosion is actually what is the punch out it is defined as a block or wedge of crcp that uh, delimited by two consecutive transfer crack a longitudinal cracks and the pavement is either process result in a loss of low transfers and increase in the transfer transfer sorry and increase in the transfer tensile stress on the top of the slope the longitudinal cracks formation typically occurs from 2 to 5 ft that is 0.6 to 1.5 meters from the pavement edge the number of the punch out should be limited to the 5 to 10% of the plane mile critical road width actually this is the number which allow number of allowable punch out punch outs which is 5 to 10 now let's talk about the another failure of the reinforcement concrete pavement continuously reinforcement concrete pavement which is the corrosion actually all we know the the pictures which i show you is a make which shows you the mechanism of low corrosion in the first diagram so the moisture enters hairline moisture enters from the hairline cracks and pores porous area and then the first when the moisture reaches to the steel bars rust begins to form then bolt up then the next process is bolt up to bulky corrosion products cause disrupted tensile strengths then finally pressure were the what are the pressures which are going to going to be act on the road by the tire so the finally press that pressures or uh, spelling of concrete the pressures resulting in the spelling of the concrete and the exposure of steel bar which is not so good for our continuously reinforced concrete pavement so so to reduce this the it has been problematic problematic it is problematic in crcp when there is sufficient concrete cover depth for the embedded reinforcement typically which is 3.5 that in 89 mm for crcp and the transfer cracks width for the la for less than the recommended design criteria of 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू एन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम एम थिकनेस ऑफ द कंटिन्यूसली रेस्पॉन्स कॉकरेट पेमेंट सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट इज अ केस स्टडी ऑन ओरिगन सो द फर्स्ट ओरिगन ओरिगन बिल्ट ओवर फाइव सिक्सटी मीटर माइल्स ऑफ रोड दैट इज जी नाइन जीरो वन किलोमीटर्स ऑफ सी आर सी पी विद एवरेज इज बींग ऑफ ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर एज ऑलरेडी विद एज वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट द एज ऑफ द सी आर सी पी इज थर्टी बट इन द ओरिगोन ड्यू टू द टेम्परेच ड्यू टू द क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन द एवरेज एज इज ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर द फर्स्ट सेक्शन वॉज वुल्ट इन द नाइनटीन सिक्सटी थ्री एंड इट वॉज एन एट इंच थिक दैट इज टू हंड्रेड थ्री एम एम स्लैब कंटेनिंग सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द लॉन्गिट्यूटनल स्टील विच एंड द स्पेसिंग बिटवीन इज थ्री इंचज फ्रॉम द टॉप ऑफ द स्लैब बुल्ट बुल्ट ऑन एन एग्रीगेट बेस एक्चुअली वी आर रिक्वायर ऑल वी नो डेट वी रिक्वायर्ड अ बेस टू कंस्ट्रक्ट अ कॉन्क्रीट पेमेंट सो द बेस विच इज यूज इन द ओरिगन इज अ एग्रीगेट बेस and then after some times in 2004 it receives an asphalt overlay with a maintenance since the late 9, 1970s thickness from 8 to 11 inches that is 203 to 279 mm has been used and the steel contents has been increased to 70% of the actually from the first section was built in 1963 and then in 1970s it is published that the length which the thickness we are going to use is 8 to 11 inches and the percentage of the steel is increased up to 70% of the <coughs> total concrete pavement so here is the conclusion the there are many advantages of this as we all know there are many advantages of crcp such as the long term performance little or the no maintenance and the transfer crack which a uh, better which you helps us in better load transfer mechanism and no transfer joint is required in this and it is a continuously reinforced concrete pavement which provide a smooth riding surface concrete can with even the currencies concrete can be distant even the heaviest traffic load there is no need to worry about rut sowing effects common with the asphalt pavement crcp is not conventional method because of its high initial cost it consists of high initial cost but the maintenance cost in the crcp is very less because in actually as we already discussed that it is not consist of the transverse joint so when the crcp is constructed The, all those failures which occurs due to the transfer joint are eliminated so here the maintenance then the so due to this maintenance cost of the crcp is very low but the initial cost of crcp is very high so most of the countries do not prefer it due to its initial cost but its maintenance cost is so low and the lack of skill labor and lack of sufficient design so thank you